So Joe B. Whisper, uh, Joe Stoker with Joe B. Whisper, and what are we talking about, Langford? Well, we're talking about your Russian queens and bees. Um, I like them. That's As, the bottom line. I like them. They're frugal in the winter. Uh, they're they're the best thing about them is they just survive. And I wasn't looking for early honey production. If you are, that's not your bee because they're too frugal in the winter for that. But by mid-April, um, they're right up there with any Italian or, uh, which is really about the only other thing I've raised other than ferals, uh, AMMs and whatnot. And um, I've just, I, I got no plans to, to go back um, because I knew that everything else, all the other forum discussions and everything else was just academic if they didn't survive. And so I haven't had, you know, I, 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 and I was tired of talking about mites. I can't do it. Um, you know, it's you go to somewhere and I just can't do it anymore. I can't listen to an hour of that. You might want to cut that. <laughs> no, <laughs> you I'm know, well, you go to a bee meeting and you hear the word bee three or four times, and it's two hours of people uh, talking about mites. I can't do it. Uh, they're just they're they are not the issue. But, uh, but going out there in February and saying, hey, lay me some drone eggs. We're gonna need some queens. You know, I'm literally out there begging them right now. To or I haven't yet, but I probably will this afternoon. Lay me some eggs, but when it's time, they'll do it. And then they just, then you got to make room for them. About mid-May, uh, you have to have room for them to lay if there are, if there's a flow going, if there's resources, or they will hit the sky. They do tend to cast off in metered swarms. So, you know, they'll come out of, I don't know, two pounds of bees because I've had them fill a, a, a decent sized box and um, go back a few days later and you don't even miss the ones you know it, so they don't just it's not like 90 percent of them fly they 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 do that really uh in a calculated way i don't know how or why and most of the time they'll land right in front of we've got some bushes right in front of the kitchen window which is the only window i look out regularly and they're big you know more often than not they're they, of course the apiaries right there uh i don't know how many times a year that i'll pull one out of those now those bushes so they don't want to go anywhere <laughs> and that's what a lot of people don't understand because they go well why don't you do a preemptive split and my opinion is everybody that needs to leave leaves everybody that needs to stay stays <laughs> Free. and you're not getting the bees that don't need to leave or the bees that do need to leave you're, you're you're making your choice which is not the bees choice i'm more work with the bees not against them yeah you, yeah you've always done that and i appreciate everything like i remember calling you years ago and man we talked for an hour and a half and you'd answer my questions and stuff and it, it was uh uh langford came out during the first during the height of covid it was like may and i needed a health inspection and nobody else would return my calls and he came out and inspect he certified to do that he came out and inspected and so that got him major cool points for life you know it was <laughs> he gets a pass on about anything else i mean we we do things differently but uh, that that spoke to me, and so uh, talking on that with swarms, and you you and I have had this discussion many times. It's like going to somebody's house, and they're like, "I don't know why am I getting the top of a tree." Well, pan over and show them what they got to land on here. Uh, you will find somebody yeah, with a manicured about fifteen. <laughs> you'll find somebody with a manicured field, and and ten hives in it, and they don't know why that uh, uh they go to the one get, tree that's yeah or they get they get a pot like you didn't give them another option dude <laughs> you know uh and even will, even as tall as that is they'll hang on their low hanging fruits yeah yeah and that's a really good thing there because it's got the uh they land in sumac a lot at home and it, it, it staghorn sumac and it's hanging full of those uh seed pods you know so it's these big bunch already look like a swarm and they won't usually like land on the seed pod but i think it uh it's like an old, old man was, I'm an old, old man now, but he was talking about using a wax ball or some kind of, you know, just nasty, dirty ball of something and hanging it in front of his swarm traps because he said it already looks like a swarm. And that, that was something that, it smells like a swarm, it looks like a swarm. He was about, he's talking about raising bees in the, during the depression when he was a kid and his mom took all the money and they put it in a jar and he didn't get it till he got married. But he was still keeping bees in the nineties and I'll never forget, you know, I was reading this thing, I never met him but he's talking about ways to make honey and keep honey straws and keep options, several things. But uh, that one stuck out to me, especially when I started seeing swarms hanging in sumac, because it looks, if you go to my house, there's hundreds of swarms, <laughs> you know, staghorn sumac. And that right there is ideal. 
this right here is ideal. I don't know if they get in those grapevines. Right there in that but, corner every year. Oh, yeah, yeah. That corner's yeah, that's perfect because neither, wherever they're coming from, uh, they're looking for a place to regroup. And of course, you know and I know that if, they're, if they come out that door, they didn't just up and, that wasn't a split decision. They've been looking for a place for days. And so it's like <laughs> they force themselves into a decision. It's like, all right, well, we got to get out of here. And so let's, let's go 40 feet from the hive, hopefully land low, hopefully for the beekeeper, and then start voting on these four or five places we've been wanting to go. They won't go straight to it most of the time. And one of the things that I get asked all the time, well, I had a swarm of bees hanging in the tree. I went and shook them in my box and come back an hour later and they're gone. Anytime I walk out in this yard and I do not know how long they've been hanging there, mm. they go to another yard mm. because they are already knowing where the three places, four <laughs> places they're voting on, or they may already know where they're going and yeah. just have it rested up and let her rest long enough to go. I didn't think of it in those terms, but you're right because the, the scouts are out and it doesn't matter. You know, if they come back, they're going to smell it. They know they're, they're sisters. And it's like, what are y'all doing in this house? We, we, <laughs> we have voted and we're going over here. Something I tell people is like dad used to say, I used to be a log homes. And I would say that when, when we started capping doors and windows, it looked like a house to me. And dad said it never looked like a home to me until the floor started getting shaded. And so I've seen people, I've done it, you know, shake them off in a box or something and then leave the top open. You got to put some shade on them. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll shake them in a box, but then I, even if it's an easy nuke or something, and I fold it over and I allow them to come up under the lid. If it's not shaded, they know it won't, it won't shed water. It's not home. And so yep. even if you have to, if, if they have to navigate around and go in the front or a different way than, you know, through the top, I shade it right away. I just get them off the edges as much as possible and, you know. Yep. Well, I will I'm drop down in, down in the description the links for Joe's Instagram and everything, and you guys can check out more there. He's got some interesting stuff. Rock and roll. I appreciate you, brother.